Hi there, I'm Black Bright and I'm broadcasting out of the UK and um, every day something comes into my head or something comes across my path and it leads me into a totally different direction. Um, so today I wanted to talk about masculinity. I kind of touched on it a little bit more, but I didn't realise, well I didn't um, fully um, take in the impact of how masculinity is being denied and why it's being denied. And then I started thinking about, um, you know, I was talking about black men being powerful but made to feel powerless. It suddenly dawned on me that black men are the most mes masculine of the races. If they're the most masculine of the races, what does that mean? It means that they're most the most feared of the races normally because when you think about masculinity you think of um, aggressiveness you think of control you think of um, them being sure of themselves being confident in who they are and those kind of things you know that be able to provide their you know their leaders so if that is what masculinity represents which it is it does represent you know being knowing you know have given you you know you, sorry your life has meaning um you're responsible you have control over your circumstances what better way to um take that away by denying masculinity in an insidious way now when you think about how um femininity has been introduced well not really femininity but um well yes let's use that for want of a better word um black men are more increasingly made to feel as though they are the oppressors if they assert any form of masculinity i mean they're allowed to be yobs on the football pitch those kind of things but they are not allowed to assert their masculinity in a constructive form. And what's happened, even in the schools, they're not allowed to compete anymore. Everything has to be, everyone's on tender hooks. You can't, um, you know, we are living in a rape culture, so black men cannot approach a woman how they might have done in the past. I'm not saying that's good or bad. I'm just saying that that is a part of that masculinity where a lot of weak men took advantage of and made it worse or made it bad for the good black men who didn't need to do that. Um, I wanted to say um, when we think about the role models of masculinity that men in particularly black men grew up with it was like Clint Eastwood it was John Wayne it was Van Damme it was um, Al Pacino. They're, all, they're always made to seem tyrannical, menacing, bad. And those images have been taken away and replaced with more feminized Im images. Even people like Will Smith or Eddie Murphy, who should come over as masculine, they don't really come over as masculine. And I'm not saying that masculine masculinity has to be aggression. I'm not saying that. But masculinity is about being sure of yourself, being in control, being a provider. When you think about the majority of masculine jobs, the ma majority of masculine roles like truck driving, I mean, being a dustbin ain't the greatest job in the world, but it's very masculine. A lot of the masculine roles, even being a mechanic or a construction worker, a lot of them are being automated. And as a result, the, the, the masculinity, the masculine the masculine role is being usurped by automation and men are not having that sense of meaning anymore. They're not quite sure it's when traditional roles are being taken away, who, what do they fall back on? You know, we need to be teaching young boys about courage, about being self-reliant, because what happens is when men are not self-reliant and they're reliant on a third party, that's what makes them feel weak. And that's what's happening. A lot of um, men, they if they go out, they say, I'm not going to work for less than 35 quid or depending on what job they do, I'm not going to work for less than 150 pounds an hour. 
So therefore, if you're at home, what are you doing with that time that you feel you are worth? Are you using it productively? Or are you just sitting around demotivated? People, the men are being demotivated because their masculinity is being denied and they're being forced. They're actually going into a, a regression because they're being forced to step back from everything. Because if they step forward, they're seen as the aggressor, the oppressor, the, they're seen as the bad guy. When they're shown on TV, they're seen as menacing. And it's all to do with quell, quashing the masculinity of, I believe, the black man, because I don't believe it, it applies to anyone else. I mean, I remember watching a video where um, they were trying to put a black man in a dress and you'll find a lot, and he refused and he didn't get the part and he lost millions of dollars. I, I don't even remember who the guy is because I didn't really mean to speak to, about him. But a lot of men are being forced into feminine roles. And it's, it, it, is, it is demeaning because, you know, inside they feel as though they know that they're masculine beings. But if that's being suppressed, that's why they become aggressive. That's why they become angry. And when their rights as fathers and as men are constantly being denied because of a system and they are out of control, that is what's causing the epidemic we have now of not having positive black male models, role models. I'm getting all tongue-tied today. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to make sure I covered all the little bits that I wrote down. But you know, I was saying, you know, women do want strong men, someone they can count on, someone they can look up to. And I think they're not taking into account. I mean, on the one hand, um, you can't use your past um, to make an excuse for your future. You have to be responsible for your destiny, because if you're not, who are you going to rely on? Are you going to rely on this system that's hell bent on keeping you down and emasculating you? Or are you going to look at yourself and say, listen, what can I do? What can I do for the younger generation who are out there killing themselves, who don't have um, someone to teach them how to be courageous, teach them how to be self-reliant, who can teach them that being aggressive and killing each other is not a symbol or, you know, um, it's not representative of masculinity. It's representative of self-destruction and of boys that have been repressed and are being told what to do and they know there is something inside them that can do better. And when they feel vulnerable and helpless, they, they, they just attack anybody who they feel is adding to that. They could just be having a bad day. One person says something and, you know, that's it. It's their form of control. It's their form of taking their lives in control, even though it's destructive. And that's what's got to stop. We have to teach them positive positive energy, not negative energy. They can use that aggression and that desire to kill, to preserve and to look after themselves. Um, what else was I going to say? Yeah, you know, a lot of young boys, they're not taught about the evils of society. You know, a lot of them are protected. And even now, you know, I sometimes when I'm talking to adults and I will mention something that is happening. I remember mentioning something about um, them taking children away from their parents and they could be coming from good homes. And the mother looked at me, she glared at me and said, no, oh, you know, because the little girl said, oh, I don't want to be taken away from you, mummy. I don't want to be taken away. And the boy looked kind of a bit perturbed. But this is reality. If you keep overprotecting your children, how are they going to be prepared for the unfairness in the world, for the destruction, for the evil, for, you know, the violation for the domination, how are they going to be prepared if we keep protecting them from all the bad things? I mean, they, they watch all this, all the killing on TV. There's no justification for it apart from what the producers want our children to take in. 
and yet you're protecting them from reality. The things that might happen, they might be taken away from their homes. They might be stopped by police. I remember telling somebody, you know, you have to be careful about your son. Make sure you don't let him go out on the street alone. She glared at me as if to say, you know, my son is a good boy. He doesn't do this. He doesn't do that. I don't allow, you know, he knows who to mix with. It's not about that. It's about preparing them for what could happen preparing them for the worst case, case scenario so that they can deal with it. People say that Asian, um, you know, especially like Chinese and Japanese, they say that their children are not like ours. They don't, you know, in England, or even in America, I think one in 10 um, men, well, ten, men are 10 times more likely to commit suicide when, they're, when their marriages break down, when they get divorced. And a lot of it is because black, uh, not black, well, black man, white man, whoever, whatever nationality, they're not allowed, that, or they don't feel as though they can vent their emotions and their hurt and their sense of inadequacy. So they go and kill themselves. But when you think about the Asian culture, what they instill in their children is resilience, is they take the emotion out of everything and they deal with focus. And that is what that is why they are not impacted so much emotionally. I can't say all of them because you have new generations, but that the culture is to take the emotion out of um, living and instill a more practical approach in order to survive. It is about telling your children the ills of the world and that everything, you know, you your child might die in childbirth. Your child might have an accident. Your mother might be murdered. Your sister might be raped. It's not about hiding those things. So they're prepared or more prepared to deal with it and they don't crumble and break down when it happens and feel as though they're the only ones it happens to. A lot of people are talking out their stories, but you know, they're they're old people. Well, when I say old, they're older. Young people can't identify with that. We need young people telling their stories and we need fathers and mothers telling their stories. I said that in another video, so I'm not going to repeat it. But anyway, um, another thing, masculinity as well. It doesn't mean that you have to be all macho. It is about tenderness. It is about respect. It is about opening the door for your lady or walking on the outside of the street to protect her. It is about pulling out a chair, but it's also about, you know, be commanding respect and being in control and being self-assured and knowing what you want and knowing what your aims are and having a sense of purpose, having something you believe in, being convicted to your values. That's what masculinity is. It's not about, you know, um, putting on a front. I mean, a lot of men, the worst thing you can do to them is embarrass them in public. I mean, that is the worst thing you can do. And a lot of times, you know, when you do that and they call it disrespect, you know, that you feel they're wrath. But there should be other things that are more important than that, because that comes from ego. When you're talking about somebody embarrassing you in public, that's about ego. That's not practical. And you can overlook that. You can still be masculine in the way you deal with it, but it doesn't have to be reactionary. Um, what else? There's nothing wrong with masculinity. We're made to feel it is. And it doesn't mean denying any other uh, sexual orientation. This is just about men who want to be men, but who are denied being men because of the system because of the way that masculinity is portrayed as a negative. Um, oh yeah, so what else is there? Um, yeah, I said about teaching children for meaning in life and it to accept responsibility. Um, yeah. A lot here actually. Also, we we're talking about you know um, women who bring up boys, and there's a lot of women who do good jobs, but boys do need men. 
for men to be men. Women cannot raise boys to be men. They can raise them to be boys grown tall and they do turn into men, but they still need the, ma the male um, involvement in their lives in order for them to be whole. Um, so yeah, it's, uh, you know, a lot of men, they want to be the father they never had. Um, that can be a good thing. And sometimes it can, it means they're overcompensating. So you have to be balanced in how you view va fatherhood. Uh, masculine, masculinity, I think it's essential to society. I always kind of chastise my old man because he's very masculine. And I tend to have a go at him and, you know, crush him down. But you know what? You know, it is important for men to show courage and to take risks and to do all of those things that make them feel as though they are um, who they were born to be. And the only way you can do that is to recognize within yourself how masculinity has been denied, whether it's out of choice or whether it's because you felt you had to do it to conform or whatever the reason is. But I just thought I'd throw this out there. Um, you know, welcome your feedback. And that's all for now. Bye bye.